What a beauty. Check this out. This is the resin river pour table or countertop to the uh, the van living space or, or the kitchen area there you can see. Um, in this episode of Motoring Home, I'm going to show you how I did this, but also uh, you might want to check this out too, which is a removable uh, chopping block that I take out with me when I do barbecues and things. Uh, I can take that outside. So yeah, um, there it is once again uh, on this episode of Motoring Home. We are going to look at how to do the, the Resin River Pour, and um, you can also check out the YouTube Live version of the video that I did ages ago. Uh, it's taken me a long time to edit. Sorry I've been away for so long. Uh, but now I'm back. I'm back doing some editing. Hopefully we're going to have loads of episodes coming out soon. Uh, so here we are. Welcome to Motoring Home. See you in a bit. piece of wood. I sanded it down yesterday uh, to a relatively fine grain um, so it's quite smooth. It's not the finished article. Um, I'm going to try a resin pour for the kitchen surface or countertop. Um, so what I'm going to do is split this down the middle, flip one side around so there's a river running through the middle and then try a resin pour through the middle. Never done it before? watch some videos not really sure for how it's gonna go but I'm gonna give it a try because I think it will look super sick when it's done so yeah you know I'm gonna crack on with now so I have an issue I mean, I kind of knew, but that's way too big of a river to pour in there. I don't think structurally it'll be sound enough. I mean, it might. I guess epoxy's going to be as strong or even stronger, maybe. But I just think, I don't know, is that too much? That's the width I need for my kitchen counter. Or I bring it in, like, closer and um, put something at the back of the countertop. The same thickness, you know, so it's, I don't really know. I don't know. Or, actually, that's a good idea. I can pour it however I want, and then I can have a smaller piece at the back, and that little s gap down the back, if I have something like the table here, something underneath it, there's storage space then. God damn, I'm smart. why you measure twice and cut once because I just mess it up and I think I haven't got any more ply to do what I want to do. God damn it. I'm like 10 centimeters short. It's ridiculous. So stupid. Take two. Peace. Alright, let me show you what's up because I forgot to turn the camera on. So my river's there. I'm putting some plastic carpet protector on this side. I haven't put any on this ball because I'm not actually going to peel it off. This is going to be the whole countertop. That down the side there, it's going to be storage space because it will be pressed against the wall. It's going to be pretty awesome. So then, yeah, I just need to board up the sides with these guys. Um, and then clamp it all down real nice and tight. That's what I'm doing now. because we're going to do our first ever resin pour. Um, so I have uh, a set of epoxy clear casting resin from Easy Composites and they've kindly supplied it in the right mix amounts. Uh, I haven't got enough to do the whole resin pour in one go but that's because I, I really want to, to try it out 
on this first, first go to make sure I got things right. So I have clear resin, two liters. Uh, I have uh, mica powder, tropical temptations. I've got some mica flakes on their way for the top pour. Um, some clear um, bucket liners so I can see the color I'm dealing with. Got my table ready to go and it's level, so uh, I've checked everything off. So we should be good to go. Safety first. So let's have a go. Right, resin pour, first attempt. Oh god, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's take a look at what we got going on here. Sweet, huh? Right, pull one done. I have to wait 24 hours for it to cure and set, and then I need to put probably the same amount, maybe slightly more in. Finish it. Doing the road and I didn't hear you switch off, but here. You lovely people, check that out. How sick is that? So, I've gone over the edge just a bite. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. And I will let that set. Last time I got some of these little bits, you see those bits there? Um, but they disappeared after a little while once it's set. So I'm gonna let that chill out. That'll spread out a little bit more. It's creeping towards the edges. I just slightly over poured it, but when it means there's gonna be no divots when I come to sand the whole thing. So there you go. Tune in next time. So this is what we got as the set pour. Um, it's pretty bright, so I'm not sure if you can see everything. And my shadow might cover it up, but uh, there were a couple of little bubbles that formed um, which I think will come out while sanding but where's my hand there we go solid let's get to some sanding starting out random orbital sander with an 80 grit pad all right because I over poured there's way too much to come off with that orbital sander so I'm gonna try this it's my belt sander it's got a higher grit on there. I, I don't know what that is. It's, it's probably like a 50 or something. But anyway, I'm going to try and get this down all to a similar level first before I then use the orbital to use higher and higher grits to get that thing smooth. Yeah, so I had to use that belt sander, otherwise, I was never going to get any of this resin off but now the resin is off my shadow might help actually once the resin is off which it is now I can start going down higher and higher grits or up higher and higher grits which is less and less abrasive and hopefully get the shine back now that it's all the right level 120 grit uh, belt on the sander so it's going to take it down a little bit finer before we get onto the orbital Right, now back to the orbital 120. That there has been gone over. I actually went back down to 80 grit with the orbital. But now there are very few scratches, especially linear scratches, in this uh, timber. In the resin, sorry. 
also the timber. So now I'm going to go back up to 120, go over it, and then keep creeping up. I've got up to 400, then I've got polishing stuff, but I might need to go even higher than that. We'll have a look, see how this turns out. All right, going with a 180 grip now. 240. 400. So I went down to Nick's Timber, which is a local timber merchant here in Gloucester. And they kindly ran the table through their um, table saw. And it got it square with this edge here, which is the edge that's going to go back against the wall. So I um, appreciate them doing that for me. Did it free of charge as well because I'm a regular customer. And that's how you treat your regular customers. And, and uh, that's what's going to keep me going back for more. So um, I'm now going to sand this edge. To the same finish as this. I've also got the 800 grit which I didn't have before. So now we're going to go down to the 800 grit on this edge and the whole of the resin on the top as well. Last one hopefully. Polishing compound. That ended before I could show you uh, how I put it into the van but that's because sometimes I get excited and forget to switch the camera on when I'm doing stuff but anyway as you saw at the start it's there you're resting on it right now uh, it was a great project and it's actually pretty easy when you take it step by step so I encourage anybody to have a go make a coffee table for your home or, or a countertop for your van like I did um, the possibilities are endless so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Follow me over on Instagram at Motoring Home. I don't tend to post much on Twitter, so don't worry about that. But please like and subscribe so you can see all the upcoming videos uh, that I'm going to put out on YouTube. Um, I think that's it. I'll show you one more time so you can see it. See the finished article. I'm really proud of this part of the van. Um, there's a bit of foot for you uh, foot fetish folk out there. But there we go. All right, tune in next time for Motoring Home. Thank you.